Welcome to Revitalize and Replant with Mark Clifton, where we equip pastors to take their churches from declining to thriving by pointing them to a new future and a new hope. Join us weekly for encouragement and practical advice in your pastoring journey. And here we are live and in person in the beautiful Linwood Baptist Church in downtown Linwood, Kansas. We had a hard time getting here. There's a big traffic jam over on 2nd Street. No, there's only, three, there's only three streets in Linwood, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. And, uh, and uh, we didn't have to use our turn signal because everybody knew we were going. Uh, everybody. We're, we're in Linwood, Kansas, a town of 400 people. I'm Mark Clifton. This is Mark Halleck. Hey, what's up, bud? And uh, Kyle Beerman's here running the board. And we are actually on the, the platform, the stage at the Linwood Baptist Church. We don't have any live audience here. But uh, if you know anything about Linwood, in 2020, my wife and I came here, and um, there were three remaining members, and the Lord's done a real turnaround here, and the little church is doing great, yeah. and it's a replant, and we're just glad to be doing this live from Linwood, Kansas. If you're ever coming through Kansas and you want to stop at Linwood, that's right. church is every Sunday at 1030 in the morning. On Man, Sunday and morning. listen, this church is so cool. I, I just wish everybody could seriously come and just see, and I mean that. I mean, it's incredible it is. We what have the Lord has done. Machine and a cotton candy machine. <laughs> we have a bounce house. All of that right here. You got it all. Right it's here. It's just unbelievable. We, we do. We really do. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Anyway, uh, hey, we are here talking about something that everybody needs to learn as a pastor. What do you do with people who get mad at you, get angry at you, treat you poorly, stab you in the back? Does that, does that happen? And that's just the deacons. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it happens. It happens all the time. Yeah, it does. It and, does. And basically, guys, Guys, listen to me. How you deal with that will determine to a great deal what your reputation is among your church and how well you can function as a pastor. Yeah. Amen. I have seen so many men not be able to deal with adversity and interpersonal relationships. Look, many times, guys, they're working out their problems on you mm-hmm. because you are the, just the pastor that happens to be there. Yeah. They've got all kinds of issues in their life, maybe from a, a previous marriage or a previous pastor or who knows what. And some people just desire drama in their life. And if there isn't drama, they're going to create it. And most of the guys, Mark, who listen to this podcast are guys like me who pastor churches of less than 100 yep. people. Yep. And so we find that sometimes churches of less than 100 people tend to attract some pretty dysfunctional folks because they can have a lot of influence in a church of less than 100 people. They go to a church of 5,000, nobody's going to pay attention right. to them if they get mad anyway. Yeah. But they come to your church, get involved a little bit, and then they get bent out of shape. All of a sudden, the whole church is upset. Yes. And unfortunately, there's something in them that needs that kind of That's drama. That's right. Well, and so, and so what we're talking about here today then is we may not be able to control others, right? That's that's right. But what is important as a pastor and a leader in the church is how we deal with these situations and these interpersonal conflicts. That's right. And how you can, how you can find God's grace in the midst of these interpersonal conflicts and how you can model for your congregation. Because believe me, people in your church, they got interpersonal conflicts at work, in their home, with their extended family, and you can model for them how to do that. Our dear friend, Jim Elliff, who has been a guest on this podcast from time to time, Jim has uh, this wonderful article that uh, we will place on the show notes that will give you some keen insights in how to deal with this. Number one, what's he say? Okay. It says, I will accept whatever means God may use to make me more humble and therefore more dependent on him, no matter how damaging to my reputation or ambition. Can you imagine that maybe one of the wonderful benefits of someone really coming at you with some stuff that's not true and that is not accurate is that it's going to help you become more humble and more dependent on the Lord. And that's not a bad thing Amen. because I want to tell you something. Every pastor I know, including me, let me start with me. The biggest problem I have is humility and dependence on the Lord. That's exactly right. I like to be made thought made much of. I love the praise of men and I think I can pretty much do it. And so if the Lord wants to use this kind of conflict to make me more humble and more dependent on him, that is a good thing. That's a good thing. And remember Paul's words in 2 Corinthians 12, 10. I mean, he says, therefore, I'm well content with weaknesses, with insults, with distresses, with persecutions, with difficulties for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. 
Isn't that true? It fosters a dependence on the Lord it and does. humility that we all, like you said, man, we all need to be growing and cultivating Absolutely. humility. Number three, or number two, rather, he says, I will seek peacefully and humbly to resolve the conflict face to face immediately unless it's impossible to do so. And I think you, what you don't want to do is you don't want to just ignore it mm-hmm. and kick it down the road and, and, and say maybe, look, I love what you said. If you see somebody in your church who's, who's upset with you and, and uh, got a problem with you, and on Sunday morning, I remember you said this, you, you're walking down the, the hallway going okay. to the worship center and you see them coming, you don't duck into a Sunday school room to avoid them. <laughs> You right? know, everything in your flesh. That's what you want to do. Everything in your flesh is, I don't want to see this person <laughs> this right. morning. That's right. And I want to tell you, I have done that. We all have. I have we done that. Have. I have been in, I've, oh, I, I see them coming. I don't feel like talking to them. I don't, I, there's conflict. I can't deal with it right now. Yep. And I, and what I love what my brother here says is, that is not healthy. No. You've got to deal with it. And and I love what you say, man. You just go right up to them, hug them and say, look, man, I love you. I'm glad you're here. I know we've had some yeah. problems, but I hope you'll forgive me and just make as much as you can. Just do that. And that Dude, takes, that takes humility. It does, man. And you just, but you're right. You got to lean into it. You just got to lean all the way into it, into the awkward, just lean into the awkward, trust the Lord and, and make it a habit every week. Cause I'll tell you, kicking it down the road does, it does nothing good for you, for them, for the church, No, you know? And so you know, kill them with kindness, man. I mean, that's what you just keep doing. And most of us as pastors, we do not like conflict, and we will do anything we can to avoid conflict. Yeah. But avoiding the conflict doesn't make it go away. No, can't it, make it a lot worse. It makes it much worse because now they say, pastor doesn't want to talk to me. Yes. Or they'll come up with even more things you didn't. You've got to deal with it as much as you can face to face. Number three, what's he say? Okay, I will thoroughly repent of any known sin in my life and will sincerely express my repentance to those who are concerned, even if there is blame on the other side. So again, it's like, it goes back to humility, doesn't it? Yes. I need to repent of any known sin in in my life. Even if, and it's so easy to live in that kind of victim mentality of, well, they did this and they said this. And hey, listen, man, you're probably right. But that's not what this is dealing with. The Lord's saying, hey, listen, pal, I want you, if, you, if again, we're not saying that you need to repent of something you didn't do, but I think you need to be honest and say, man, I, what part did I play in this? What have and I done? What was it Spurgeon used to say that if someone says, I have something against you, I want to come talk oh, to you yeah. about it? And we've all had that, where a guy yeah. will say, hey, pastor, I need to, something's come oh, yeah. up and I need to talk to you yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Spurgeon would say, hey, listen, and, and I love it. We've talked about it before, but it's so yeah. good. He'd get ready to go into a meeting yeah. where you know you're going to get blasted, right. right? It's one of those meetings. You right. just know this is right. not going to be fun. Right. But if your, your mindset and, and heart posture is, hey, listen, I just know everything I do in my life, I could do better. Like everything. Yeah, so right. whatever missiles they're going to launch at me, yeah. I'm just going to agree with them yeah. because they're they're probably, they're just right. Yeah, you know and, what I mean? and what Spurgeon says, whatever they're going to accuse me of, I'm actually far worse. I'm far, than, worse. I'm far worse than that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, guys, seriously, we go with such a defensive mindset yeah. sometimes. Yep. And maybe what they're accusing you of isn't accurate. But let's be honest. They don't know things about you that the Lord knows yeah. about you and me. And we're much worse than they think we are. That's right. right? And so that's that, that spirit of humility. And you repent of every known sin in your life and express repentance to those who are concerned, even if the blame's on the other side. Yeah. That's always about leaning into the obvious. Yeah, yeah, leaning yeah, yeah, into yeah, the yeah. awkward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you've got someone who's just, you know, Pastor, you just aren't, you're just not, you don't pay any attention to me. You don't, I remember one time I had a guy tell me that I ignored his kids. In fact, mm. I had a guy tell me the other day I ignored him. I don't know. I, no. you know, I, maybe, I mean, I don't do it intentionally, yeah. but I had a guy actually upset with me. He said, I saw you at this meeting. I said hi to you and you didn't respond. Yeah. And I, I said, you know, I don't even remember. I'm sorry, I brother. I don't even remember seeing you there. Well, you did and you didn't respond. Yep. And he was really torqued about yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. And my initial reaction was, Get over it, yeah. dude. <laughs> I I, what yeah. the heck? Yep. But but what I had to do was say, man, that that is some that is my bad. Yes. I need to ask you to forgive me of that yep. and help me never. I pray that I'll never do that again. Yep. Even though I don't even remember seeing him, I was probably looking at somebody else. He didn't. I, I didn't intentionally overlook yep. him. Yep. But he was really mad about it. And he wasn't going to give me any grace. And so I just simply apologized and said, hey, man, I'm sorry. I was wrong. I should have been more attentive. Please forgive me. Let's move on. Dude, the best way to diffuse 
an angry person is that right there. That's exactly it. Like, if you want to keep the fight going, defend yourself. Exactly. But if you want to put this fire to bed and agree with them. And just say, look, and that's the humility. And, you know, you put your arm around him. At least I would. I don't know if Clifton, you would. But I'd put my arm around him. I'd say, hey, listen, man. But, you know, I, I, probably, I probably saw 100 <laughs> people that day. Right? <laughs> exactly. No, it's right. I was that's like, right. I, dude, I saw 100 people that day. Dude, I was having some phys- – and that day I was sick that day. I remember the yeah. day he was talking about. I was not feeling well. And I am doing a hundred different things. Oh yeah, what's well, so, ridiculous? It's so a ridiculous. This, so this second. one oh, no. time, oh, yeah. I don't, I don't make eye contact with this guy oh, when he yeah. says something. Oh yeah, and it's like I'm the most evil person in the world, oh, yeah. most egotistical person in the world. But you know what the truth of the matter is? I am an evil person, and no. I'm an egotistical person. No, that's right. Right? I we mean, I, I need to own that. That's right. Even though I wasn't intentionally doing it to him, there was a way the Lord had reminding me, Clifton. You got to you got to know how bad you really are, dude. Listen, I, I'm just, as we're talking, I'm just thinking about this. Happened to me just a few weeks ago. Same thing. There was somebody waiting to talk to me after one of our services. I I didn't even see them. Yeah, I no because there were people yeah. everywhere. Yeah. And then just came up to me and said, <laughs> literally, was like, my feelings were really hurt. <laughs> um, you know, I was waiting to yeah. talk with you and share yeah. something with you. Yeah. But here's a, here's something I've learned. I had a guy tell me this. Not only apologize, say, hey, would you pray for me right now? Yeah. Would you pray for to help me grow? And I mean, yeah. you want to shock them. Right. And so we prayed together yeah. right there. Right. And you know what? It put an end to that. But I think it's just, it's being humble. It's it's naming the reality. It's leading into the awkward. Okay. What's the okay. next one? Now, I will be painfully accurate in my words about myself, even if it embarrasses me or condemns me. And I think that's true. I, I think you've got to own the mistakes you've made. Yep. And again, even with that guy I talked about there, I said, you know, I said, look, I, I, I was probably distracted. I should have been more attentive to people. Yeah. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes I'm sort of introverted and I don't want to connect with people like I should. So I've got to be very painfully honest about my shortcomings yeah. and not be defensive. That's yeah, basically that's what the, he's saying. That's it. He's like, don't, as a pastor, just don't do that. Don't be defensive about that. Just own your problems, own your weaknesses, even if they're not totally your weaknesses. Yes. And understand that we all have these problems. And even if it embarrasses me or condemns me, mm. uh, I mean, and that's really important. That Sometimes is. we're so worried about being embarrassed in front of people. And the reality of it is that can be great for our humility. Yeah. And frankly, People can, they can respect that. If yeah. the pastor is so humble that he's willing to, to be embarrassed like that and not feel, you know, people look at a pastor and if they think you're, you know, you've got this image you want to keep mm-hmm, up, mm-hmm. people are not impressed with well, that. Well, and that, I think a good just kind of application question that we need to ask ourselves in light of that is, if I am very quick to become defensive, what's going on in my heart? Yeah. You know, and I would say that to our, our listeners What's going on if you tend to be somebody who, man, and, and you, you, you hate it, but you're overly sensitive, overly defensive, what's going on there in your heart, especially when it comes to identity and recognizing and resting in your identity in Christ rather than in your position or what people think of you or whatever else? And so it might be worth some, spending some time really in prayer and saying, Lord, help me look honestly at my heart in this. In this I, I like this when he says, I will gladly leave vengeance to God who sees and evaluates hey. with perfection. Dude, that's true. I mean, come that on. Is so true. Like, listen, if you're getting hammered all the yes, time. Yes. And it's relentless. Yes. We have a God who's perfectly just. And we have to trust him to that situation. Never pay back evil for evil to anyone. If it's possible, as far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. Never take your own revenge, beloved, but let leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him a drink. For in doing so, you'll heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Guys, mm. Romans 12, make that your heart as a pastor. Let yeah. I mean, sometimes we hold grudges. Yeah. What that guy did to me, what that lady said about my wife, how they've helped me, hurt me in this situation. Man, just leave that to the Lord and love on them and care for them. I can't, make, I can't think anything better than that. I really cramp at all. 
All right. The next one. I will give thanks in everything and rejoice in the Lord, for this is always safe for me. In other Mm. words, you're to rejoice in all things. So when someone is angry with you and upset with you, you are to find ways to rejoice in that. And again, we rejoice because it teaches us humility, teaches us to depend on him. It teaches us to love people that are not loving. It helps us model for our family and for our church what it looks like to deal with people who are hard to deal with. And I'll give thanks and rejoice in the Lord for that. I mean, that's absolutely wonderful. Well, think about this. Think about all the people who were not critics, who, who are in your church, who love you, you love them. How often do we spend time just thanking God for them, right? Yeah, right. We can take the one criticism and we dwell on that and that individual when there's 30 others who are just pure joy, man. Yeah. And it's a delight to shepherd them. And so thankfulness, God. Thank you, right. God. Some of you need to hear what I'm about to say on this one. We got two more to go. Some of you need to hear what I'm about to say on this one. It's really important. I will forgive from the depths of my heart when I'm asked to forgive without analyzing whether the offering of the person is worthy or he has perfect motives or if he's adequately repentant. Mm -hmm. In other words, you know, if someone says, I want you to forgive me, Pastor, you forgive them. You don't try to say, well, what's their ulterior motive? Are they just playing games? Do they really mean it? Are they going to hurt me again the next time? I mean, you just have to, you, I love what he says here. You just take them at that word value and you trust them and you go ahead and give them mm. the forgiveness without analyzing whether they're worthy of it. You know, this person's hurt me before. You know, they've asked me to do it before. And, you know, I'm not sure. I think they're yeah. doing this just to manipulate me. I'm not going to forgive. I'm not going to forgive. Don't do that. No. Please. Listen to Jesus. And listen, Matthew 18, right? When Peter comes up to the Lord and, and says, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against yes. me? And I forgive him. Up to seven times. And what does Jesus say? He says, I did not say to you up to seven times, up to 70 times seven, over and over and over again. And let's be honest, when we think about the grace we have been shown through Christ and the gospel and the forgiveness he's shown us, how can we not forgive over and over that's and right. over again. And that's got to be our posture, man. That's so when gotta people be come at you with even some false accusations and some just contentious things and just people who like to have drama and make your life difficult, I love what the last thing our brother Jim Elif says here. I will refuse to let Satan, the arch enemy of believers, gain the ultimate victory in this conflict. Mm. You got to remember who your actual enemy is. Totally. And if you give into this and you make this, you blow this thing out of proportion, you end up spending $20 on a 10 cent issue mm. and you just get into this fight with this guy because you're going to prove you're right and he's wrong and you're going to protect your reputation and he's not going to get away with this, then Satan wins. And that's, that's right. and your your passion is for God to receive glory in your life and in your ministry and in this church, and not to let Satan use no. this for his benefit. We do not battle against flesh and blood, right? Right. But against the principalities, and that's exactly right. Know your enemy. <laughs> as I can't tell you, as as a pastor, as a leader of pastors, so many times this is the thing that makes a difference between a pastor who can be successful and one who can't. How do you deal with conflict? How do you deal with people who come at you even with false accusations? Mm. And just take a look at these things we put in these show notes. Some of you really need to hear this and listen to it and let it be part of your life. All right? Thank you for listening. Check us out at churchreplanters.com. Subscribe to this podcast, please, please. Okay, thank you. Bye. Thanks for joining us today on Revitalize and Replant. This podcast is brought to you by the North American Mission Board where we help dying or struggling churches regain health for the glory of God and the good of their communities. If you found this conversation helpful, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform. To learn more about becoming a replanting pastor or to explore resources about revitalization for your own church, visit churchreplanters.com.